What is an extra rule your family added to a popular board or card game? In Clue, once the killer has been discovered, and it's one of the pieces in play, the game becomes a chase. The remaining player turns our rolls to get out of the mansion through the doors in the hall. The killer tries to catch the remaining pieces and kill them. Secret passages only work if you roll even numbers in that room. The killer rolls twice per turn and cannot use secret passages. You would love the game betrayal at House on the Hill. In Scrabble, the person who can make the longest word goes first. Highest points breaks a tie. This makes the game more fun by ensuring there are lots of places to play your letters. That's the best rule here tbh. Literally anything goes in Monopoly. Whatever business deals you make in Monopoly are valid for example. Paying some insurance each round so that if you land on their rent properties you are immune. Taboo. You can play 3 player. Cutthroat. Taboo. The rules don't really change but the scoring does. There's a ref. Watching for taboo words. Guesser. Can't see the card. And talker. Can see the card. The guesser and talker will get one point each for each successful guessed word. Taboo words are scored one point to the ref. At the end of the round, rolls rotate like normal, clockwise. After everyone has two turns talking, rotate the other way, counterclockwise. This lets everyone get a turn guessing and talking with each person. I prefer this way because you don't get stuck on a winning or losing team. Everyone plays with everyone, and there's never a fourth person out. That's a good one. Don't know if I'll bring Taboo back into the household though. Me and the wife got into one of our biggest fights over Taboo. It was back when we were dating, and we don't remember what really caused it. We just know it was Taboo and have agreed we will never play it again. Late to the party here but in Monopoly we allow the utilities to collect 5% of any player to play a transaction over $200. It helps keep the utilities relevant and desirable. We had a variation on risk where everyone write down their moves and attacks and all the moves and attacks were carried out simultaneously. First the troops were relocated, only able to move in country. Then attacks rolled. Once again, you could only attack a neighboring country and if you won, you could occupy it. But you could not keep pressing the attack until the next turn. If two or more countries were attacking each other, they all rolled the max number of dice. Ties with and rolled. In every coop game, pandemic, castle panic, whatever, there is usually someone who tries to tell everyone what to do. I can accidentally be this person. So, I implemented the right hand man rule. If the person whose turn it is one advice, if, they can only get it from the person on their right. Nobody else can say anything. Makes things way more enjoyable. I like when cooperative games suggest to play with a closed hand or restrict what you can say to limit quarterbacking. Spirit Island is my favorite as quarterbacking is too hard to do as each player has a wildly different gameplay style. Rule for my kids with all board games. Winner cleans up. Loser or lowest score picks next game. Tantrums rage quitting gets you banned from the next game session altogether. Thank you for the award kind redditor. Username checks out. Don't know if this counts as popular, but would Dington's go, a game of traveling around the world. Rule in the actual game was you had to roll exact to get into a place, but it ended up with two men at ice rolls doing absolutely nothing. One player ended up just stuck in one place for literally half an hour, before then getting somewhere else and then being stuck for another half an hour. They did virtually nothing all game. Really, that rule means the game should be called Waddington Stop. To combat this, we came up with a house rule that you have a 3 strikes and in, if you fail to get the right number 3 times, you automatically get to your destination, to stop the game being dull. We haven't actually tried this yet because since playing it, when at the end of the game we came up with the rule we've had a pandemic that has prevented me from going back to visit my parents who have the game. One rule used for many board games, if someone takes too long with his or her move, anyone can fetch the 3 min hourglass from the shelf and set it on the table. Once the time runs out, the move is over, regardless of, another rule for Scrabble. Any word is valid if you can find it in any book in our library within 3 minutes. I hope you have some Lewis Carroll in your library, and a maverick who takes advantage of it. Trouble is a fun little game. Unfortunately, with the wife and son, we only have 3 players. 4 players makes it even more fun. 
So we have a fourth player we call Bob. Bob gets the last turn in the cycle. Someone rolls for Bob. And then the three of us agree on what Bob's best move is. It's especially fun when you have to agree that Bob's best move is to take out one of your own pieces. The mugging rule in Monopoly. If I land on a space that you are currently occupying, I can choose to mug you. We take turns rolling the dice. If I roll higher, I steal $100. If you roll higher I go to jail. In Trivial Pursuit, we have a rule. If the player being asked doesn't know the answer, they can ask the room. The room doesn't actually answer, but they say whether they know the answer or not. If nobody knows the answer, it's considered an invalid question, and another card gets drawn instead. If someone in the room does know, but the player being asked doesn't, then it's just a plain old pass. My dad knows a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot. When he was a kid he read the Encyclopedia Britannica for fun. Basically, the rule was born from, if even dad doesn't know the answer, then nobody does and it's a terrible question. I like this rule. My family has done similar before with other trivia games but on an irregular basis. I might propose this become a thing at the next board game night. In the game of life we would put the white car on top of the middle building of the three white buildings together. The first person who got there, got to take the white car and it was worth 1 million dollars at the end of the game. At the end of Scrabble you make up a story with all the words on the board. We never looked at the tiles for scores. We just played to get the best words on the board. Ro, that sounds lovely actually. Good to spark creativity as well. Nukes and Risk. If you roll 3 sixes when attacking you defeat every army on the territory you're attacking into. If you roll 3 ones, you nuke yourself and lose every army in the territory you're attacking from. My mates and I play Risk all the time. Might introduce this rule to them. If you say sorry while playing no, you pick up two cards. Slap that plus four down with authority. Also, if you have exactly the same card as the one that has just been played, you can jump in and play your duplicate regardless of if it's your turn or not. If you're playing against a Canadian this just guarantees your victory from the start. We have a deck of Monty Python playing cards, which includes, in addition to the normal 52, the 4, 1 stroke 2 of spades and the 15 of hearts. Rather than just using them as jokers we add them to every game we play. I need this deck. In or no we draw cards until we can throw one down. No limits. We have had to buy a second deck because of this. We also possibly lost friendships over it too. My brothers and I play like this. I won a game and they kept going for second, third and fourth place. And nobody got second for 45 minutes. It was agonizing seeing them keep going. And going. And going. Are any of your families looking to adopt a 38 year old? My family didn't play board games growing up and my kids are too young or unable to play. Guess I have to wait longer. Come join us at our board games and revel in excitement about awesome board games wallow in misery about not being able to play as much as we want. Risk. Each player has to choose their military theme music to play on their move. For example, German military marches, Red Army Chorus, ominous movie music, etc. All moves must end with the attacker saying these concludes my territorial demands as if you were a warlord facing a cowering princeling. Yes. In Katen, when you roll a 7 or play a knight, you have to move the robber, but you can't move it back to the desert and claim any resource you want from the bank. This is funny to me because I came to post basically the opposite for Katen. My family does extortion on 7s. As soon as you roll it, you get to argue with people about why you shouldn't put the robber on them. And if everyone bribes you then you put it on the desert. Every time dad farted everybody else got $100. Monopoly. Small compensation for the nasal assault. Love dad but Jesus he smells like something crawled up his ass and died. Dad you stunk up the hotel. I ain't paying rent. Phase 10. After a person has laid down, if their set has any wilds, other members are allowed to take the wilds as long as they provide the card the wild was representing. You're only allowed to do this if you can lay down in the same turn. Hijacking this comment with another phase 10 rule. Instead of picking up one card from the deck or discard pile, 
We have a rule where you can pick up the entire discard pile so long as you can use the top card to go down. Very op when you're making sets of 2 or 3. If the color red is getting played in the card game no nobody is allowed to talk. You have to pick up one card for every word you say. My flatmates and I had double points if you can use it as a funny word for genitals in a sentence in Scrabble rule. Flaps, ming, tea, boobers, tinkle etc. In Carcassonne, I always play where everyone draws a tile at the end of their turn, so they have everyone else's turns to consider what to do with it. One fun rule to occasionally play with is starting with 3 tiles and drawing when you place one. We always play with the drawer at the end of the turn. It speeds up the game immensely when you have a procrastinator, Tim. My girlfriend's family award 400 pounds if you land on go in Monopoly. It's still 200 pounds for just passing, but you get double if you land on it. I just looked this up, because I was sure this was an actual rule. I guess it isn't. Risk, we added a path from Madagascar to Western Australia because we thought, since every other continent has more than one border to defend, it was a bit OP for Australia to only have one point of entry. I've played Risk video games where Australia is connected to Argentina. When we played the card game Illuminati we somehow ended up making it a rule that when you laid a card down you had to say I know this will surprise you but the X control the Y. And sometimes it was just so mismatched we'd be all actually yes. This does surprise me. In high school, my group of friends loved to play Clue. Unfortunately we found the game got a bit stale after a few nights of playing. So, we actually designed our own board extension containing additional rooms, and created new cards for extra weapons and characters so it was more challenging to determine who the killer was. Scrabble. My grandma and I would call it substitution. Basically if the person before you played bat and you need a B to get the word you want, then you can change out the B in bat with the C in your hand. As long as it makes a word on the board in any direction then you are able to change letters around. This makes Scrabble why I more fun I am HO. With being able to work the board and get bingus multiple times in a row, adds a lot of strategy to the game. My sister and I play Life Sucks. It's life but you only get paid if you land on payday, not if you just pass it. Basically you end up with a pile of loans and it's a struggle to get out of debt. Guess who? No questions about appearance. Instead, we ask questions like, has your person ever pooped on a train or does your person have strong opinions about fonts? That's how I used to play, but I won't tell my opponent that. They would just think I was a crazy person. Ask a ridiculous question, then arbitrarily flip faces down with all the confidence I could muster. The look of amazement on my opponent's face when I won was priceless. It's only ever happened once. The Phantom. When playing cards against humanity, a random card is added by the phantom each round. Surprisingly, the phantom frequently keeps up with us. It's a lot of fun when everyone says oh, that was the obvious best one then realizes no one is claiming it. As someone mentioned, the standard rules call this gameplay Rondo Cardrition and Rondo has beat our asses more times than I like to admit. I think it's the sheer randomness that makes it hilarious leading it to often being chosen. We have a generic version of Jenga that has the company name printed on one of the logs. When someone pulls that log, they have to yell Kel Barsa in Fozzie Bear's voice. Kiel Basar. It never gets sold. Boggle. Youngest child is allowed one and two letter words since she's learning to read. And she's allowed to have her sight words list available for reference to help her practice them. So far it's working because she's finding three and four letter words on her own. No. Stack draw 2s or draw 4s until you can't no mo. Unfortunate soul that can't stack draws all. Be a pong, gentleman's rule. If the ball rolls back you fight to retrieve it. Wiener gets a free shot. Trick shots must be very specific in nature because all loopholes are fair game. Canasta, the unicorn. All wilds canasta worth 2000 points. This causes table flips. In Settlers of Caton, we made the 2 and the 12 a pair. So that if one rolls, players can collect resources on both numbers. We also play that the robber can't steal from a player until he or she has at least 3 points showing on the board. Both rules just speed the game up a bit. I got interested in chess when I was 6 years old. 
which was right around when the Lion King came out. My dad was the one teaching me and since he didn't know English very well at the time, he taught me things in Spanish. The term for checkmate in Spanish is checkmate. The ja is pronounced like ha, but since I was so obsessed with the Lion King I used to just call it Hakuna Matata and it became the thing to say when you win. It was just one of those dumb things that little kids say because they think it's funny, but it stuck for those couple of years I was really into chess. I love this. We had a German nanny as a kid who taught us how to say surprise in German. We messed it up and would just say eat a mushroom. Years of me and my brother jumping around corners and telling people to eat a mushroom. No, I refuse to look up what it really is. When someone rolls a Yahtzee everyone playing has to scream Yahtzee at the top of their lungs. It's pretty silly but it's hilarious. I feel like people who don't do this are the weird ones. Initial rule for all games. Winners have to clean up the game. However my brother found a loophole. Whenever he was about to win, he would quit so he wouldn't have to clean up. Revised rule. Quitters have to clean up the game. If no one quits, winners clean up the game. Whoa. Nothing would ever convince any of my family members to quit if it looked like they were winning. I don't think the words I don't want to win have ever been uttered in my family. <laughs> no. If you have the exact same card that has just been laid, you can play it even if it's not your turn and play continues from you. This makes a lot more exciting and faster game as everyone has to be watching and quick. A co-worker broke her finger with this rule, and another one broke an office chair while playing in lunchtime. Use this rule wisely. Not my family but we added the rule of just being ballsy and make an accusation when you think you got the person, place, and weapon in clue. Previously, we can make a suggestion and an accusation on the same turn. In Monopoly my family added a rule that if you are super rich you can pay to change a rule. This was to make the game more realistic and we made a bond system like stock bonds to help the bank when he was running out of money and a debt system. Clue, Miss Scarlet is not the color. I got a nice anniversary edition of Clue for my birthday when I was a kid. And of course I wanted to play as Miss Scarlet because she was the pretty one. Well, somehow Miss Scarlet was the color the first two times we played. This really upset me. I didn't want to be the baby guy. So the next time we played my mother pulled out the Miss Scarlet card before we shuffled and pulled the case file cards. Everyone got to start the game with one less suspect. And I was happy. Love it. We got ours from a thrift store. Because two dollars. And after a few rounds discovered the game was missing the kitchen card. Now, we just know it's not the kitchen and use it as a way to tease out the clue we're really after. No. Open conversation for players against the one who calls a no. Openly planning to make sure that person does not succeed. Does the person before them have any way to stop them? No. Then do they have a reverse? Cause I got something for them. What color you think they have? Whatever it takes. My husband hates this teaming up and refuses to play that way. We played like this. Not so much a rule as an emergent tactic. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.